Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo flawless master presage mission and this time it's on the Titan. I'm going to be using Sunbreaker Bottom Tree, obviously because solar ability kills with this sub subclass will give you health back. I've used the exact same weapons I used with the Warlock and the Hunter run just to show that it doesn't matter what class you're on, these weapons will still work. So primary shotgun, I'm using the Heritage. You can use the Blasphemer or any other primary shotgun. I'm using the Ikelos SMG and I'm using the Lament Sword. Now, for the mods, the most important ones are Passive Guard, as you can see there. I've also went for Global Reach. You want to make sure you've got Scavenger and Finder for the weapons that you're using, just to top yourself up on ammo so you never get in trouble with that. Double Solar Damage Resist, and I went with Rage of the Warmind. Uh, Lucent Blade. Now, that's really, really important. That is our Charge with Light output for the sword. Now, you need to have another Arc mod on to, to get Replenishing Gob, which is Lucent Blade's secondary perk. Double Sword Ammo Finder, and I went with Elemental Charge. So basically, when I throw grenades, I, as you've seen on the mods, when I throw grenades and get kills with grenades, I'm going to drop up an Elemental Font of Light. When I pick it up, I'm going to get times 2 Charge with Light, which I will only expel when I'm using the sword thanks to Lucent Blade. So the jumping puzzle at the start, it's not really a jumping puzzle, but making it round the side because you can't get in the front door, making it round the side is going to be the exact same, although I think we can actually do this little... There's a little uh, exploit I, I use, a little shortcut. And you can go straight to it on the Titan because, as you can see, I've got catap uh, catapult lift on, which gives me a, a real strong upward upward momentum when I, when I boost. But as you can see, I say this to a lot of people with this jump. I use it like the hunter jump, so I boost and cut. With a catapult lift, if you just hold the boost button, the boost runs out actually a lot faster than you would expect. So what I do is I, I boost cut, and it just keeps my boost. So boost cut, boost cut. When we get to the part where you've got the screeps, where you first meet the screeps, when you're pulling the the levers to open the doors and do the various things, I you'll see me switch to my sword because passive guard will get that protection. And it just means I'm saving time by not fighting the screeps. So as you can see there, in this room, Right here in this room is this week's uh, hidden scavengers chest or whatever it's called. Uh, so once you get into that room, once you've shot and got your egregore link, just look for the data pad over to the right and that will help you get that one. Again, the, 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 main, the main points within this run is you're going to have, you're going to have a section with the uh, Three Void Captains, two Void Snipers, just before you get to the hangar. That's going to be one of the key areas, because everything else, even the boss, uh, is, is just play by numbers. You can see that I actually meant to swing past that Screeb, and the sword just auto-locked onto an enemy. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I get in too much trouble on this run. I think that's probably the, main, the worst one. But uh, So you want to use Passive Guard's kind of protection. For the Screebs. Don't worry about this section because you're not coming back here. So you don't have to make sure all the Screebs are dead here. You just want to get past them. As you can see, we're, we're, we're good time. And because you get 25 minutes to do this, time is of the essence. So what I do here is I kind of, you see here, I'm going to throw a grenade that way. And then I want, I want some of the Screebs to explode. I want to... I want to be close enough that I'm a threat to them where they, where they auto explode. Because I'm going to have to come back here. So I'm, I'll maybe just have a little look just to make sure. There we go. We see we can see one. Use the shotgun just to clear it. Because we are going to have to come back to shoot the fuse. So that's for this Screeb section, that's really the only one you want to make sure they're all dead. Because you've got to come back here. So once we've activated this switch, we're going to come back and we've got to shoot the fuse. Which opens up our en entry to the... The Star Wars section, the 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 compactor. So there's your fuse. Now, when we get down here, you see there was one more. You just got to be careful. It's an idea to make sure your volume, your game volume's up because you can hear them, and that's what happened there. I couldn't see them, but I heard them. So I knew to get the sword out, jump up, and try and get back onto the platform. Now, 
with 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 this part, you're gonna have a ton of screams. You've got to try and find these uh, these fuses. You can see I, I, you can see them if you jump up in the air. But what I'm gonna want to try and do is clear these screams out. You see, I've got a war main cell. I'm not gonna break it until now, and that clears most of the second wave. And it's that that's a real fast clear. So I put a grenade down, uh, and because I've got. Uh, because I've got Rage of the War Mind, uh, my grenade can produce War Mind cells as well. So with shooting on my grenade, I produced a War Mind cell. I just left the War Mind cell until the next wave of Screebs come down. And then I took them out. Because I've been jumping up in the air, I could see where the fuses were, at least one or two of them. When you get into this room, you'll see here. I'm going to throw a grenade down there. I'm going to take this sniper on the on, on right next to the boss first. And I'm going to go for the next one. Now, you're always going to get a bit of heat. Uh, when you're doing this part, you see he ran away there. You're always going to take a little bit of heat. If I'd have just came over here, I'd have been safe. Pop my super. I would have been safe, but because now I'm going to get my health back on solar kills, I can I can push a little bit, be a little bit more uh, aggressive, because as you can see, all any solar kills, I'm going to get my health back. So now I'm going to take this first captain. And then we'll run run away back here with the first captain's down. Just get some explosions here. And that's all the ads down. Now there's two little boxes down here that you can use. See that, that it's not really a box, that's kind of cover. You can use that to block these these two to block the shots of the captains to get into position. Now, I was saying about having another arc mod on to get the the lament second perk. That is what allowed us to attack those two champions. It, replenishing Guard, I think it's called. Uh, if you've got another, which I think I've got Momentum Transfer, which is an, an, arc, an arc melee mod, which gives me my second mod on Lucent Blade, which, as I say, is Replenishing Guard. It gives you your heavy attack back faster. It allows you to attack with your revved sword faster once you use it. So once you come into the hangar, we're going to go straight up top because you always want to deal with the Void guys first so you can see i took that captain down and there's the two snipers this is a free zone it's always going to work like that if you can get up here and you can take down these these void void guys first you see that i've got heavy uh you can get this gives you a free section once you take down one of these captains then you're gonna get those uh those ravagers the the kind of okay they're kind of running about with like uh torches not really torches, lanterns, lanterns, explosive lanterns. Once you take them down, as you can see there, I'm just checking to make sure they're coming in, and I want them to kind of see me, so they know where I am, but I, it's just it's just a thing with me, I want them to actually see me. I'm getting them coming from both sides, so unfortunately, the groove in the door stopped my grenade going right across, but it's all good. I created a war main cell, and now you'll always get a couple of screams up here. A thing about these screams is if you're in with your fire team and you want to go flawless, and you can do this, but your fire team maybe are struggling with getting the flawless. If any of your fire team stay up top there while you're down dealing with these these abominations, they will they will intermittently get waves of screams. It'll only be four in a wave, and it's like every 10, 20 seconds, so just be wary of that. But if nobody's up there, I'm not sure you get the screams if nobody's up there. Now what I'm doing is, once you take down the, the those captains, so I, I took down the Void upstairs, and I took down all the all the waves of Ravagers and the, the wave of Screebs. It's just going to, once you take down, you know, the next captain, which I went, I went Arc downstairs first, then I went Solar. Once I took the Arc one down, I got all the waves of ads. Then when I took the Solar one down, it's just us and these two abominations. So as you can see, I'm switching, I was switching damage between both of the abominations because no more ads it's just you and the abominations and then as soon as I take an abomination down I'm right back up here because the ads are going to come in lovely grenade there and 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 the, the, you're in you're in the exact same place again it's it's the waves are exactly the same we, we had those uh, ravagers 
couple of screebs, which my grenade took care of most of them. You see there, that's that font of light I was talking about. I picked it out up and got charged with light times two, which is, is nice to have, but at this point, we don't really need it. So, when I broke the war mine cell, it killed these guys down here. These guys. It killed, killed those uh, lurkers. So, all I had to deal with was that arc captain, so I broke his shield with with my, my Ikelos SMG and finished him with a shotgun just to save a little bit of heavy because you can see I don't really have a lot of heavy. And because we were going between uh, because we were going between the abominations, once I took the next wave out, the, the abomination that was left had very little health because I could deal you know, you can deal but damage to both the abominations once all the captains are down after the first wave and because nothing else will come until one of the abominations is dead. So if you really wanted to, you could engineer it that you could kill one abomination and then kill the other one if if you had them low enough in the first wave, which would just leave you to deal with the captains and that and anything else that was coming. So again, come in here. We're going to have a couple of little waves, uh, a couple of little uh, combat sections to deal with. Nothing too crazy. Uh, just, just watch how I. If you're unsure about what to do with the, the switches, just follow what I'm doing on the screen. The locations of the switches, as I've said before, uh, when you come into an area, it, the nine times out of ten, nearly every time, every time but one that I can think of, you'll have to activate a switch. If you activate the switch. And uh, I was just waiting, so, sorry, I will digress. I was waiting within that uh, Sun Warrior, that, uh, that Sunspot, to regenerate my grenade. That's, a, that's another great thing about the bottom tree hammers, is every ability kill spawns a Sunspot, every single one. And if you stand within the spot, Sunspot, you, get a, you're, you greatly increase the recharge rate of your abilities. So, again, if you come into a room... And there's, there is a, an opening that you can see. There'll be a switch. If you open the switch and that doesn't open a door, there'll be a fuse. So, But if you follow what I'm doing on screen, you'll get a, a real good idea of where the switches are and what to do. So, again, I try and kill as many of these with the SMG as I can because that gives me a war mine cell, which, as you can see there, is really good for just clearing out the lurkers. There's two chieftains here, two, two scorn champions. And the war mine cell took out, took out actually the lurkers. So now I can do the charge lament, sh and you can see how fast I got get my charge back there. So yeah, I can go 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 up against them with the charged lament uh, heavy attack, which bypasses their shields and gives me health back on hits. So it's a win-win. Uh, be careful when you get here for this uh, turret. And we'll go up here and uh, shoot the. Shoot the pod to get the Egregor link. Is that how you say it? Egregor, yeah, that's right, that's right. Uh, it just sounds weird. Egregor sounds like something out of a Frankenstein or a Dracula movie. Uh, so when we get to this part, I'm not going to bother. There's a screeb. There'll be a screeb before we get to where we need to go. So we turn left down here. It was so dark, I actually lost which way I was to go, so I had to back up a little bit. That's the Screeb there. You can quite easily shotgun him. And that's us out of that section. Uh, we're going to have one more kind of combat section before we get to the boss. Uh, and this is the only room I can think of that when you come into it, you don't have to shoot a switch or do any of that. The, the, the door is open. So we're going to put a grenade down here. And that should hopefully kill 90%. As you can see, I am I am trying to get my... my uh, I Kalos in there just to maximize the chances of me producing a war main cell. So I've got the sword on, which allows me to tank their shots. So I get close to them, and it's really easy to take both of them out. And as you can see, that's really simple. Now what we're going to do is go and activate this switch, which will open up the fuse, which I nearly forgot about, but remembered before I'd ran too far away. And that will open up the door to the, the pod that we need to shoot to get the Egregore link. And we've got one more section now before we hit the boss. This is kind of the platform section. Now, when you get to the platform section, it is worthwhile taking 
all three of the Void Snipers out on the first run. So we're going to shoot this pod. Right? Get through here. And then when we get to these platforms, you see I'm just bypassing that platform. I'm just going to jump here. And then I've got my sword out so I can tank a snipe shot if need, needs be. I didn't need to. Now what I'm going to do is throw my grenade down. Just melt this boy here. And then I'm going to put my sword back on. Full health. And I've boosted up. Use my sword to get over there. The faster you get over there, the better. But again... Make sure you got your sword out because passive guard will allow you to tank a lot of the, da the damage from a snipe. So, that's all the ads cleared. All you've got to do now is make this jumping puzzle. It's not really a puzzle. I just, sorry, I, I'm just always going to call it a jumping puzzle. It's, it's ingrained in me from since the Taken King. So, this jumping section. <laughs> you make sure, don't, don't rush this. I've seen people rushing this and they... They miss maybe this first part, you know, make sure your landings are good, running, you know, make sure that you're, you're timing your jumps and you should be fine. Now we're here at the boss. Now the boss, I found a lot simpler on this run than I did on any of the other ones. Maybe it's just experience or whatever, but the DPS sections were very, very, very simple. So... You put a heap of damage on the boss just to get him to go away. Then we run, I'm just doing it, it's just for time. I didn't need to do that circuit, but it's so I can stay at, I can stay mobile. I done a circuit around this inside area. And now, and now literally, I am left with one, one, one captain, three of these kind of uh, smaller ads, three of these stalkers. Once you kill these guys, you are going to get, you are going to get a smaller wave of, it's not even a wave, you're just going to get two, two stalkers that are going to spawn at each side. So I kill these guys, activate the switch. Now somebody said in the comment section that you don't have, actually have to go into this room uh, to activate the switch. Uh, I didn't bother with that because literally for the, for the couple of seconds I would have saved, it's no problem. So make sure you activate, you get uh, coolant flush one and two before you go inside to the room. Because if you haven't done that, once you activate this switch, uh, you, once you activate this switch, you'll still keep getting burnt. So the only other thing I can say is when you get, make sure you've got full health when you go down here. And we're just going to find the boss. Now, as you see here, it's kind of strange he done a teleport straight away, but it's all good. We're just going to smash him. Now, what I try and do, I'm just stay. I'm trying to stay. I'm trying to stay mobile. I'm. I'm not want to be an easy target. So I get out of here because he's very close. He was very close to. Uh, he's very close to coming at the end of his first phase. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop back down. And just take out some of these ads. You can see there I've done more damage to him. But we managed to take a captain which was good. And then I'm back up here. That's the first phase done. No drama at all. Take out this captain. Now you've got to be careful on this phase. Because now you've got the void snipers. So I've, I've backed away here. I never took too many of the stalkers out. And you can see why. Because I wanted to take them out with the Ikelos. Which I managed to take out one of one of the snipers, at least one of the snipers. I think I got both of them. And now you just have to watch out. You're gonna get some screebs. This, uh, again, I've, I found you see me just being a little bit cautious there, because I found that sometimes the screebs just go and kind of hang about next to the captains. So I'm just gonna take this captain quickly, and that brings out what what wave of two, group of two. I don't really want to call it a wave. Group of two readers on each side. No drama. Easy peasy. The war mine cell for the void snipers is really important. But a grenade would help. You know, you don't have to attack those void snipers. Because I know some people have said that you know, getting one shot or close to it. If you've got passive guard on 
and you go after them with a sword. You can tank a shot. You can tank a double shot, I think, but you would be... You'd be low. But then you could tank it and charge your shots and get your health back. So you can see there, I know that the boss is here. Uh, I'm, he walked away as soon as, as soon as I came down. You see, I, I jumped on a pipe. And the pipe allowed me to have a look to see what was happening down here. So I just popped my super. And now I'm going to charge to my sword and go after him with a... Now what I do with the lament is I do... Is normally I try and get five, five sword shots. So five, one, two, three, four, light attack, and then heavy attack. Now when you're doing that, make sure when you're doing the the light attack, make sure that uh, you 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 you've got to time your heavy attack just at the end of the fourth light attack. See here. I see those two raiders, those two snipers, and that's the snipers down. I, I put a grenade as soon as as soon as I felt it was I was safe enough to put a grenade. I did. So there we go. Then we're, again, we're just left with one captain, but now we've got these guys. So I'll just move over the other side. Use the sword to help. Get the explosions. Now, because I have my melee, I could have meleeed and created a sunspot. And they would have all died coming into the sunspot and I'd have got health for all the all the deaths. Bit heavy there, it's always good. Didn't realise I cr created a war mine cell. It's all good. Now and the reason why I always go round and I'm kinda you know, it seems like I'm being a little bit too kinda too hesitant is what I try and do is I try to create the shortest route between me and he enemies that can really hurt me. I want to create the shortest route so I, I try and close the angles as much as possible. And that is why I go round the edge of things, that's why I try and stay close to edges before I push down. I just want to create less dead area. So less area that I've got to cover to actually get to them. If an enemy is shooting at a location, don't don't attack from that location. Either draw the fire from somewhere that you're not going to attack from and then attack from where you want to attack from. Uh, as you can see, the boss was here, so luckily, he he wasn't even looking at me. But what I can do now is, is I can come up here after my attacks. Now, you see that there are ads coming. Throw a grenade down there. I don't have to attack every ad. I just need to clear my section. Which I have. Now I can go back down. Now there are these pipes on the left. If you want to, you can just drop down onto them and just have a little look. And just attack. And, I'll, you know, you can put a grenade down on the boss as well. There's one more of these little ads up here. And it, as you see, I dropped a grenade. The grenade... Kills everything that comes near me. Uh, I'm getting health back. And I can just come down. Share the wealth. Kill the boss. And that's the run. Very, very simple on the Titan. Uh, normally something I don't do too often. On, on when I'm doing Titan or Warlock runs. Uh, save for grenades. I don't really lean on the abilities too much. It's not about... It's not about the abilities, it's about the strategy and the gunplay. But I, f I feel like that the Titan really le really lends itself, especially with the solar, uh, the solar grenades and the abilities and the getting the health back and being able to regenerate your own abilities. It's really easy just to lean on top of those abilities. Uh, some people are going to say, well, look at your power level. Well, go back and look at the Warlock and the Hunter run. And I was, I was a lot lower using the same weapons with a very similar strategy. The power level, don't don't be misled by the power level. I am a decent power level, but this would work from the base of the power level, which I think is 1320, would work from there up to where I am. So there we go, guys. That's all three characters done. I have got one more planned 
and I'll hopefully be able to get that out in the next couple of days. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I appreciate your support, as always. Uh, 3,000 subs this week was a really, really great achievement to me, and that's thanks to you guys. Thank you very much for supporting me. If you did enjoy this, a like would be awesome. Take it easy, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.